Welcome to Thrive with Megan and Harry. We bring you news, views, and commentary about Harry and Megan. Let's thrive together, guys. Hope you are all doing well. I am doing great. So let's get started, guys. This week, we saw parts of a conversation that Harry had with rugby legend Gareth Thomas, right? If you remember, Gareth Thomas had been unceremoniously unceremoniously outed as being HIV positive and like somebody had leaked his status without his consent and therefore he was forced to reveal his status to the world before he was ready and he had to kind of deal with the fallout and stuff from the public and you know all this right and it, it happened that lots of people actually spoke out in solidarity with him, including, of course, Harry and Meghan. And would you know it, apparently Wills also did as well. <laughs> but if you remember, Gareth actually, like, he just acknowledged Harry and Meghan because he, he said that they'd actually reached out to him, like, in person and were actually friendly you know friends of his and were also supportive behind the scenes so it wasn't just like you know on paper right like how it seemed to be with wills so anyways but both harry and Meghan have been there for gareth apparently and for a world aids day a few years ago um harry thank Gareth for turning a positive, turning a negative into a positive with his commitment to HIV ac activism, right? So Gareth said that he always, you know, thought his life's passion was to play rugby. But now he believes that because of rugby, he gets to do what he does now, which is activism. So, in this sit down with Harry that Harry had with Gareth this week, Harry alluded to the fact that his mom's work was unfinished and that he feels obligated to try and finish her work as much as possible, right? So guys, remember that Diana was actually one of the first high profile and definitely one of the first from the royal family to speak out about HIV and AIDS. And she, she even famously hugged and shook hands with people suffering from, from that, right? This was the beginning of that epidemic, guys. It was the beginning. And people actually believed a lot of crazy things then, right? It's just like today with um, what we're going through. At first, nobody knew what it was. And, uh, you know... Like they, they actually thought at first that you could get get the disease by simply touching someone, for instance, because it was so new then and nobody really knew. But Diana, obviously, she trusted science and she felt comfortable enough to go out and shake hands with people and hug people that were afflicted with with this. Right. Which is like an amazing thing right what a forward thinking individual she was guys she was great she she was just amazing and you know harry has been on this campaign for years do you remember when he got tested with rihanna once again congratulations to riri she's pregnant <laughs> just to bring that up again but either way, um, they were both in Barbados a few years back um, to bring awareness and stop the stigma about the disease and getting tested and generally just knowing your status, pretty much. So this is something that's close to Harry's heart. And he sees this as continuing his mother's legacy, right? And I think that's great. I am really proud of Harry for doing this and just continuing that great legacy, you know, it's, it's just amazing. I really, really think it's great. So, um, moving along though, guys, um, listen, <laughs> according to Camilla Tomini, everybody in the whole wide, um, of the, I don't know, the whole of England, <laughs> Everybody has forgiven, has forgiven Camilla, the tampon holder. <laughs> According to Camilla Tomini. Oh, it's like, 
it's like 20 years ago, 20 years on, right? And Camilla, the tampon holder, <laughs> has really never put a foot wrong. That's what Camilla said. <laughs> Camilla, listen, I mean, I love it. I love it. I love it when these people talk for the general public and they like if they represent what the general public is saying i just love it i love when camilla tomini just gets on tv and pretty much tells people how they're supposed to feel about something you know i love it <laughs> camilla's like oh it's been 20 years on and you know and and and, and she's never put a foot wrong and <laughs> i'm like camilla please i'm like i think people have already spoken like the general public has spoken and the general public is not interested in Camilla as the as being the queen but hey hey we all know what's going to happen they are have already shoved it down the people's throats and the people have no choice but to accept that Camilla is queen <laughs> she is the queen she's your queen accept it but anyways listen because listen this is what Camilla Tomney is obviously doing here. And she's been, listen, she's part of that horrendous PR campaign to help Camilla's image. And, you know, I'm sure of it. I'm so sure of it. Like, like, this is a whole thing. And then with this Angela Levin writing a whole book about Camilla, I mean, who needs a book about Camilla? Like, I mean, seriously, seriously. Do you see a bestseller here, guys? Do you see a bestseller? Let me know if you see a bestseller because I'm curious because <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I don't see, I don't see a bestseller. I've got eyes, guys. I've got eyes. I can see Camilla as the tampon holder that she is. <laughs> Anyways, I, listen, I don't need a book to tell me who Camilla is. And to be, to be honest, um, Angela Levin, I smell a flop coming, to be honest. <laughs> big a big old flop <laughs> because nobody really cares about Camilla that much it uh, like I'm serious like nobody really cares that much about Camilla because she's not interesting like that but uh yeah there you go there you go they're trying to um rehab Camilla's image here but anyways there you go I, I guess that's what we have to accept I mean, well I mean the people who live there because <laughs> we don't have to accept anything but anyways, moving right along, um, listen, what about this whole thing with Prince Charles and the Rona, guys? Oh, my gosh. My gosh. This guy contracted the Rona like twice already now. Jeez. And, and listen, guys, these people don't even wear masks anymore. As far as I see it, because I, I, well, I don't know if this was, the, I saw a video the, the other day. I don't know if it was an old video or a new video. I have no idea. I apologize. I don't know because I don't really follow these people, but I saw a video of like the queen and the, and the, so I, and, and with, with, um, Charles giving her a kiss on both cheeks and all that. I don't know if that's the one from two days ago or if it was from months ago. I have no idea, but all I know is that he's got the Rona now. <laughs> Twice he had it. Twice. Listen. Yeah, so I don't know. Like I said, he's been with his mama, the queen, just a few days ago. That's what they said before he was tested. And now everybody wants to know if the queen is the bionic woman. Because she's all she's always listen, she's always around people with the Rona. I want to know if she's bionic. And she never seems to get this. She never seems to get this disease. So I just want to know, isn't that funny that so many people in that family that are always around her guys has got that. They got that, 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 um, the Rona, but she has never, apparently she's miraculously never gotten it. I just, you know, do you, do you think they're, listen, guys, do you think they'd tell us though, if she was to ever if the 95-year-old queen was to ever come down with that, do you think they would tell us? What do you think? <laughs> I don't think she would. But, you know, I find it hard to believe, especially when they are so, listen, they are all so secretive about the queen and her health. I don't think they'd admit it if she did get it. No, they wouldn't. They definitely would not. <laughs> but that's just my opinion. And uh, yeah, there you go. I don't know. 
they don't listen. They don't want people to panic and all that because lots of those people actually really do believe in her. And a lot of those people, they believe that she is their servant, you know, the servant that they pay millions to, the servant who stands there and waves. And that's what she does. She lives in the palace. She stands there. She waves. She has billions and billions of dollars of taxpayers money, but she's the servant. There you go. She said she's a servant. Last time she said, oh, your servant, Elizabeth. That's what she said last time. So I guess she's the servant. That's what she said. I guess we have to all believe that. Just like how we have to accept and believe that Camilla will be the queen or your queen. I don't know. She's not my queen, but maybe she's your queen. But there you go. <laughs> Either way, uh, listen, I'm not too sure of this tampon guy, this tampon guy. There is always something wrong with him, guys. Has Have you ever noticed that? He has got the best doctors, the best of everything. He's got the best food. From the time this guy was a baby, he, he, or in, from the time he was in the, you know, his mother's stomach, this guy has had the best of everything in his life. Prince Charles has never had to go a day hungry. He's never had to go a day working hard, with hard, you know, back breaking work. He's never like, like the rest of us, like how most people that live in that country has to work hard an eight hour shift, a, a long day. He's never had to do any of this stuff, guys. None of it. He's like I said, he's got the best doctors, the best of everything, the best food, the best everything. And yet he still comes out looking like a squash berry half the time. <laughs> The guy walks around looking like a squashed berry. <laughs> he does. He walks around looking like a squashed berry half the time with some breakfast sausages as fingers. Have you ever noticed his fingers, guys? Oh, my God. It's like, I think he needs, like, I need, I think he needs to hold off on the salt because, you know, salt swells you up. I think he has to hold off on the salt, guys. I think he's like, like, it's just too much salt going on there. I don't know. And then, then he's, he looks so flushed and red and red in the face with the, looking like a berry half the time, like a squat, like, well, like a squashed berry. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know about his health. His health is dodgy. That's what I think. Cause I'm like, well, I mean, you've seen the queen. She is like dynamite. She's been around for 95 years. She only started walking with a cane like a couple years ago. And I think she, she kind of gave it up recently. I don't know. But we all, we see that she is like the epitome of health. She's always, she's never been, I mean, I mean, listen, the woman sits and she has people ironing her clothes. She has ironing her socks, ironing her aprons. I don't know what she wears, but all I'm saying is she doesn't have to worry about anything. She didn't have to worry about getting up and making her, you know, making a living. She didn't have to do anything. So of course she'd be like, if I was living like that, Hey, I'd live to like 150. As a matter of fact, if I had to live like that, if I had people running my baths and not have to worry about anything, don't have to worry about the bills. Hey, I would live like that too. So there you go. She's the epitome of health. She can live to like 190 if she wants, but this is what I'm saying here. Like, listen, Remember, guys, I told you that, that the Queen and Philip were cousins. They were like, I don't know if they're second, third or fourth. I don't know what kind of cousins they are, but I know they're cousins, though. Listen, maybe that backfires sometimes. You know what I mean? Maybe it backfires and you get one that doesn't age so gracefully. And I mean, listen, I mean, look at Wills, for instance. I mean, come on. He's not gracing. He's not um, gracefully aging either. Like, you know what I mean? So. <laughs> So maybe it's the two of them that it skipped. I don't know. Maybe they're like the ones that it, that that everything. Maybe maybe Charles and Wills are the ones that uh that skipped the like you know they missed the, that gene. I don't know. Have you listen? Have you ever in your life, guys, seen a guy who looked as handsome as like he was the handsome prince at age eighteen, and now he looks like a toll, a big toll, <laughs> at thirty nine years old. <laughs> This guy lost all his looks in like, in like 20 years. It's like all gone down the drain. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. 
when William was like 18, 19 years old, the guy was like the handsome, he was handsome back then. Oh my God. And we all have to admit it, he all he was handsome back then. I don't know what happened to, to Wills. So that's what I'm saying. Wills and Charles, they, they, they're they not Asian that well. I, like I think they missed the gene that they all get, you know, that gene that makes them live to like 150. He missed it. They both missed it. <laughs> but listen, William's looks and the demise of it has been epic. Epic, y'all. Epic. <laughs> so anyways, I don't know. Listen, I, like I said, I don't know if it's that recessive gene that shows up every once in a while but, or what. But both Wills and Charles, like, no. They are aging like cottage cheese, guys. Aging like cottage cheese. Oh, man. And the funny thing is, ah, wait, listen, listen, you know that whole inbred situation? I think it's, it's just so unnatural, but you know, it is what they did for hundreds of years or thousands of years. I don't know. I think thousands of years they, they've been inbred. So there you go. So listen, it's, it's nuts. <laughs> but listen, my point is, though, that Charles doesn't seem to have the same longevity that his mother, father and grandmother had. Right. I don't know, cause cause listen, remember her, um, the queen's mo- the queen's dad, he died when he was like in his forties or something. The king, the king, I don't even know what his name is, but the king, the king, her, her father, king, whatever he was, he died when he was in his forties or fifties or something, really early. So and then she, I mean, her mother, her mother lived to a hundred and something, or something like that, and. So like they all lived the really lo- and uh, her her uh, her cousin her husband <laughs> her husband lived really long as well. So like these people live really long, right? But I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And this, but this this Charles he gets sick a lot. I, I don't know. It's uh, I don't know. Maybe it's the constant need to be a tampon. I don't know. Maybe that's why. I don't know. What do you think? Is it because he's a tampon? He wants to be the tampon? I don't know. But listen, he got this thing like twice already. And he's always around the queen. So and she's never gotten it. So at least that's what they said. I don't know. (laughs) I take it with a pinch of salt what they say. But listen, do you think they'd ever let us know if she actually did have that? I don't know. I don't think so. Anyways. (laughs) But yeah, they be aging like cottage cheese, both Charles and Wills, aging like cottage cheese, guys, cottage cheese. (laughs) So anyways, moving along. So it seems like the future, future king, Willie Leakes, is in Dubai as we speak. I don't know. Listen, I don't know if he's still there, but I heard he was in Dubai. I don't know. Listen. But the thing is, you'd never know it because all they're talking about over there is how silent it is in Montecito. When Harry and Meghan are minding their own business, these people be like, where is the where is Harry and Meghan? Why, why, why didn't he come out with a statement about Camilla? I'm like, really? It's like poking the bear. It's like, what is wrong with these people? Harry and Meghan are minding their business. They're taking care of their kids. Harry is doing that, um, talking to Gareth Thomas about carrying on his mother's legacy and y'all are asking him what he thinks about Camilla really like he got nothing better to do with his time really they're wondering why Harry hasn't made any statements about it or anything and you know I'm wondering why they keep trying to put Harry in it with Camilla I want to know why I mean they keep saying he's going, he's going to go after Camilla. He's writing about Camilla. My God, people, I'm sure that Harry is not thinking about Camilla as he's lying in his bed at night. I'd venture to say he's got better things to do with his time. I mean, look at his wife. Hello. <laughs> he's busy. He's busy, people. <laughs> I mean, look at, look at Megan. You think he's got time to think about Camilla when he's got Megan right there? Hello, people. I don't mean to get rude, but come on. <laughs> he's got better things to do with his time but anyways listen I hope that you're all enjoying fabulous February I hope you are and enjoying the Black History Month specials that I've been having listen I've been doing videos about past heroes in the black experience and I'm also covering today's icons as well so please do check out those videos, guys. I did one on Mae Jemison and Katherine Johnson recently. So check that out. Okay. 
And listen, guys, I want to thank and welcome some new members, some, ch- some new channel members. They help support the channel so that I can continue to support Harry and Meghan and bring you their news and help defend them from the negativity out there. So they are helping out, guys. Thanks so much to new members, Arnold Sanders. Listen, guys, Arnold is the first one to reach out to me when I first started this channel. He has always been supportive and he just, you know, he brought people with him, including Lydia Washington, who was, of course, my first channel member. So welcome, Arnold, and thank you for supporting me from the get go. Then we've got new member Cookies and Cream. Everybody knows Cookies and Cream. She is so popular. (laughs) Anyway, she, like I said, she is always supportive and always gives great feedback. And then there is Mrs. S and she has also been there as well. She has been so amazing. So welcome to my members, my new members, Arnold Sanders, Mrs. S, Cookies and Cream, and of course the amazing Lydia Washington. You guys are amazing. Okay. Um, I also want to thank those of you who have made, um, who have sent me any super chats. I'd like to thank Alice Langdon, who made two generous donations to the channel. Nutty Doctor, who has made generous contributions to the channel as well. Channel member Cookies and Cream has been amazingly generous, of course, sending super chats as well. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You guys are just amazing. I really, really do appreciate your support. You know, thanks so much for supporting the channel, guys. And, you know... Just please do remember to like, subscribe, and share this. Um, You know, thanks, like I said, for any super chats, and thanks for the support. And thanks so much for joining me, guys. And remember that Megan said it's not enough to just survive something. That's not the point of life. You've got to thrive. You've got to feel happy. Unquote. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great one. Thank you. Bye.